Prior to your session, the classroom computer will be sitting in a virtual queue, waiting for you to connect. When you click on Start Tutoring, your computer joins the classroom computer in the virtual queue. Unlike screen sharing, your computer and the classroom computer are independent, even though they display the same material. As the tutor, you control the session and decide what activities to show your student. The first step to getting started with activities will be to select your student's reading level. This is done for both flashcards and stories. Reading levels are set by the teacher and will be listed above the reading level buttons. If the teacher doesn't move the student's reading level after 30 days, the system will prompt you to move the student to the next reading level. If you find the material is too difficult for your student, you can always move them back to the previous reading level and then try advancing them again the following week. As you work with your student, keep in mind that rewarding their success is an important component in building reading confidence. While verbal praise is very motivating and should be given often, we also provide high five pop-ups you can use to further reward your students' hard work. High five pop-ups are located on the lower left corner of each activity screen. To send to your student, click on the high five icon and select from one of the options presented. When you click the selected icon, your student will see it jump up on their screen. Now let's take a look at the activities in the tutoring application. The first activity in the sequence is flashcards. Flashcards has two functions. It gives students the opportunity to practice sight words, and it tests students' knowledge of words that have similar beginning or ending sound patterns. These are also known as onsets and rhymes. Practicing sight words and onsets and rhymes will help your student increase reading proficiency. Spend five minutes at the beginning of your session on flashcards. Once your student is reading at level G, discontinue playing flashcards and focus more time on reading. When playing flashcards, click on a word. Your student will see the same word on their screen. Each time your student gets a word correct, mark the word green by clicking on the green button. If your student struggles with a word or gives an incorrect response, mark the card red by clicking on the red button. Your student will only see the words you show them and will not see the words you've color coded in green or in red. To confirm your student has received the flashcard you sent, watch for the sending to and received by prompt. This feature is available for every activity and will help you gauge when the student can see the material you sent. The next activity in the series is stories. Reading stories out loud is the practice students need most. Ideally, you should spend 15 to 20 minutes reading stories each week. When you're ready to read a story, click on the story icon from the activity menu. Select the appropriate reading level and click continue to open the story library. A library of leveled books will be displayed on both your screen and on the student's screen. The student will tell you which book he or she would like to read by giving you the number next to the book title. To select the story, click on choose. Once the student is viewing page one of the story, they can begin reading. Let's take a look at a typical story. When you choose a story from the library, the student will see page one of that story on their screen. While you can advance the stories forward by using the arrow keys, your student will not have that option and can only see the page number. As you read, you may want your student to focus on a particular word. You can show that word to your student by typing in the message student box. For example, if your student is struggling with the word sing, type the word in the message student box and hit enter. That word will be sent to your student. The student will see an owl pop up with the word you sent. You can also draw your student to a specific word that he or she may be struggling with by clicking on the word. Your student will see the same word highlighted on their screen. Asking questions about the story is a good way to see if your student is able to remember key points of the story. Can the student tell you about the story in their own words or make connections between the story and their own experiences? Not all stories include comprehension questions, but feel free to spend time asking your student about the story when you're done reading. If a story does include comprehension questions, they will be presented on your screen at the end of the story. The student's screen will display pictures to help them remember what the story is about. Depending on the reading level of your student, there are three types of stories to choose from. Primary stories, controlled text stories, and science stories. 
Primary stories use words that students are learning in first grade. By reading these stories, students are increasing their word knowledge and practicing newly learned words. Once you feel your student has mastered a level of primary stories, it may be time to test their fluency skills using the controlled text stories. Controlled text stories begin at level D. When reading controlled text stories, we want students to practice reading with fluency. In other words, can the student read without having to stop and sound out the word? Can they read the text accurately and with expression? Students who can read controlled text stories fluently are ready to move to the next primary story reading level. Science stories are presented in later levels. They are very engaging and introduce science-related content about the Earth, space exploration, and chemistry. If you selected I Speak Spanish when you registered, you may be paired with an early English language learner. When reading stories with your student, you'll have the option to toggle between the English and Spanish version. This will help support word learning if your student is struggling with a passage in English. If the student is struggling with the English version of the text, flip to the Spanish version. Reading the passage in Spanish will help the student better understand the context of the story when reading the same passage in English. In addition to providing stories for practicing reading and fluency skills, we also provide students with word games designed to build knowledge of words and word parts. You can fit these in between stories or at the end of your session. There are three word activities to choose from, word sort, three in a row, and mystery word. To view step-by-step -step directions, click on the directions link at the top of each page. In the word sort activity, students will practice sorting words based on their word endings. This is a great practice for students learning how to sound out words. As the tutor, you will select the word from the menu. Your student will only see the same word you select. Ask your student where the word belongs based on the word ending. Once you click on the appropriate box, the word will populate and the student will see the same word on their screen. Once all of the words have been placed in a box, Draw your student's attention to the similarities of the words. Then, have your student read the words in each box. Three in a row is a favorite activity for many students. This additional exposure to words will help encourage fluent reading and word identification. When you're ready to begin, determine who will be an X and who will be an O. Notice each box has a word. Your students can see the same words. Taking turns, you and your student will try to be the first to get three X's or O's in a row, up, down, across, or diagonally. When you place an X or an O in the box, your student will see the same thing on their screen. Mystery word is a fun way of learning vocabulary and will help students remember the spelling of new words. To begin, think of a word or use one of the suggested words found on the right side of your screen. The student cannot see these words. When you have the word in mind, click the number that matches the number of letters in the word. Your student will see the same number of blank spaces on their screen. As your student begins to guess letters, click the letter on the keyboard. This will highlight that letter for both you and your student. Place the cursor on the appropriate line and select the letter using your computer keyboard. Your student will see each letter on their screen. You may find your student needs a little help getting started with this activity. Consider filling in the first letter or offering a clue to help your student guess the word. The whiteboard simulates a magnetic board and is great for practicing spelling, difficult words, or making up fun stories. Type a word or phrase in the field at the bottom of the screen. When you click Submit Word, your student will see the same word or phrase on their screen. You can also move words and phrases around by dragging anywhere on the board. While it may be tempting to spend more time with your student, please end your session promptly at the end of 30 minutes. There may be another tutor scheduled immediately after your session, and the system only allows for one tutoring session to be running at a time.